This is a simple circuit for starting and stopping the water pump from underground tank to your rooftop water tank. For this device you only need a relay with a 110 volt coil or a 220 volt coil depending on the voltage delivered by the power company. A relay is something like a remote control switch. It has a coil and two sets of contacts. By the way, our relay's contacts must have a minimum current carrying capacity of 10 amps so they don't wear out quickly. If we apply voltage to the coil, the contacts move and change their position. For this application, it is required that upon energizing the coil, one of the poles is turned on and the other is turned off. Now you can see it as a schematic drawing. The rectangle with the letter D inside represents the coil. The two sets of contacts or poles are shown in the shaded area. One of them is pictured as being above the other. The contact shown in the upper part is always closed, that is, turn on, as long as the coil is not energized. The contact drawn below is always open, that is, turned off as long as the coil is not energized. Now suppose we apply voltage to the coil in our schematic diagram. The contacts move. Now the upper set of contacts is turned off. On the other hand, the lower set of contacts is turned on. That's all we need for our pump controller to work. Now look at this other schematic. Here we include the rooftop tank and the wiring. Let's study it a step at a time. To begin with, we have an empty tank. We can also see that the coil in the relay is connected to the live wire of the household power, marked as L1 in the drawing. The other end of the coil needs to be connected to the neutral wire, marked by the letter N. Since the tank is empty, the lower end of the coil is not connected anywhere, since water has to contact the electrodes in order to turn on the coil. We can see that the relay contact going to the pump motor is turned on. This contact is shown in the upper part of the drawing. This causes the pump to start pumping water to the water tank. The tank becomes full and there is a point in which the water touches the electrode marked with the letter A at the top of the tank. As water touches this electrode, the neutral wire is applied to the coil through electrode C through the water and finally through electrode A. This causes the relay coil to be connected to the neutral wire, thus being energized. As the coil is energized, the upper contacts of the relay open, that is, they turn off, and the pump motor stops. At the same time, the contacts shown below are closed, that is, turn on and keep the neutral wire connected to the coil through the electrode mark with the letter B, even when the water level begins to drop. Although the water level in the tank is going down, the relay coil will remain on until the water loses contact with the electrode marked with the letter B. With this, the coil loses contact with the neutral current and the relay is released which turns on the top contacts and the pump restarts and the process repeats itself. Although the water goes up and continues to rise, the open bottom contacts prevent the coil connecting to the neutral wire. But when the tank is full again, the water touches the electrode A and reactivates the relay, and so on. This is all. An additional comment is that if your tank is made of metal, simply connect the neutral wire to the tank itself, omitting the electrode mark with the letter C. It is imperative to make sure the neutral is connected to the electrode C or, if applicable, to the metal tank. Never connect the hot or live cable to the metal tank or pipes, as this will cause hazardous electric shock when touching the pipes. The only allowed connection to the live cable is shown in the red lines. Live wires should never come in contact with the water. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.